download and uh, take the new simulations using this EGSS 6.1 beta. So first thing is after you unzip the EGSS from its GitLab link, you double click on the console to launch it. While you double click, make sure that you have Java installed in your computer. So in my case, I have Java, so it will launch the EGS console. Let me bring the EGS console up. It will launch the EGS console. Normally, if there's any reason for it to not work properly, then you may want to check that the workspace is always some fixed location. Okay, and you will see that EJSS is a launch. Then sometimes it may come with some warning, just ignore it. Because this is a beta version which sometimes may have some issues running it properly. Now this beta is important because the EJSS library has the data analytics to run the simulations with the ability to talk to Moodle. So some of the things you may need to take note of is in this particular simulation, I will explain how you can actually take the file and the code from the GitLab, uh, GitHub. So for example, you Google GitHub. Okay, again, the, the link will be provided. Let me just close this. The link will be provided for ease of access. So the first thing you need to do is uh, scroll down and you look for this assessment .js for EJSS, click on it. So I have created a cheat sheet. So the first thing you need to do is to define the variables. So in this case, if this is a brand new simulation that I need to change, then I'll go to the model, I'll look at the variables, and I will introduce the variable call first, set it to true, because later on we'll use this first boolean code to do certain things. I'll have introduced a start boolean which is blank. Okay, uh, it's already explained here in the in the GitLab, uh, GitHub uh, comments. The next thing you need to do is to copy this code over here. Copy, co co control, uh, control C, and then paste it because uh, the code says to paste it inside relationship of the Moodle. So uh, for Moodle, so I'll keep it inside this fixed relationship and then rename it. Let's say I right click and then I rename it as Moodle. Okay and I will paste it here okay I will comment out all the code that I think is uh, not useful so it what it means is uh, if the type of mode of the model is registered start is undefined then start will be defined as this model is registered started and if it is first as well as start is equal to true then I will do this uh, like a timestamp artificially I'm injecting this code uh, into the element call question with the property uh, with the value uh, q1 this is to allow me to inject a, a stem or tr a interaction for Moodle to detect as the start of the of the question and then later on I'll turn it off by uh, making first off so this will only run run once next thing is you need to come to this place and copy this part of the code <coughs> okay and then you paste it inside any of the plotting panel any of the decoration any of the top right top left messages so in this case i put it inside here under the top left so when you <coughs> the, the trick is when you try to uh, run the simulation okay agree to any uh, errors if there's any okay you may need to agree to several times and you will see that uh, the this is the top right corner uh, sorry top left corner and the top left, top left corner has nothing here because uh, it detects that it is not a Moodle deployment and the visibility will be set to none. Okay, next thing. The next thing is you need to do something. Sometimes we need to trigger some fake interaction for Moodle to record. So I will copy some of this code uh, that could be useful. Uh, I think this and these are the same. Uh, so it is good to have a code to, let's say, I want to copy this part of the code. Okay, and uh, maybe say I want to add this so that this is registered as the as the end of the question. So I will use this to later define the JSON assessment.json file. Okay, and sometimes you may need certain other interaction. You can use all this code to help you. Okay, next thing is I see that I okay. So uh, sometimes in my combo box. So let's say for example, I look at my simulation. 
sometime in my combo box <coughs> I want to a be enable people to let's say um, let's say after the, the combo box is selected correct is on change then I will do all this these are all the pre-existing code <coughs> so I will introduce a code called this and I will introduce a number so question whatever the n is chosen let's say n in this case is 3 then this will be q1 and then q1 because it's a uh, 3 minus 2 and then i can this is like javascript you can just uh, assign it as a as a variable it will be interpreted correctly so this is to allow the so sometimes this is called the start so this is to register the start of the interaction okay now how about for the end of the interaction so in the end of the so every simulation is different you need to figure out uh, where to inject the new code so let's say in this case uh, let, let's look at this part of the code so when the gut is on release it will do a certain thing here so let's look at the top okay so at the top i will these are already pre-existing code and sometimes you look at the code you have to read it so some understanding of javascript will be crit critical to the success so because i may want to do a certain trick then I may do a, a, a replace. So for example, I, I'm trying to generate an answer key for this particular uh, simulation where the, the, the student will drop the, the gut at the correct position. So I do a answer key dot splice and then chosen box comma one and then after that followed by the string with the interaction. Then after that, I will do a answer key lock. It will save to itself plus it will do a next line followed by the answer key. Answer key being this, this thing over here. So I, I basically introduce these two variables. Okay, make sure you make sure you also define the variable, these two variable called answer key and answer lock. Okay, initial value is zero. Okay. So that is initialized to uh, nothing in the beginning. Okay, let's continue. So sometimes um let's see, uh, let's look at the code, okay uh etc etc okay i'll do a i, I do an intelligent code to make sure that this is used later on as the error lock in the json file or i think some i think it's called a uh, message or something it's basically the hint uh, the, the the hint for the errors by the by the student and this is um this is the answer lock so this is to create the text area uh, text area element text area and then property is a uh, value and then this is the answer key initially answer key lock is an array so i use a dot to string to change it to a string in order to be understood by the by the variable and the and the model okay then i will do uh, so in this case when the you see when when the score increment and when the let's say n is three then times two so the score becomes six then the the toolbox will show this dialog to congratulate the student and sometimes I, I again I need to trigger the end. So this is the end of the interaction because I have already finished. So I, I need to have a mechanism to to check. Because I can't use the score, because score is a is a variable in the simulation. It's not an interaction detected by Moodle. So I need to add uh, interaction using the score as a value. And then I will now call the element answer followed by concatenate with n minus two. So uh, it's it's a trick to to create answer one to the element then the value is is the score uh, and and so on so let me see okay so then in the end i think uh, i think i added this code because for the very last question i have a problem because the very last question maybe there's no way to uh, to do a question select so i will i will have this end code which again is to create this question or uh, whatever the 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 students have selected then minus one is is to create the question let's say question three question four then i will put into the element question and then uh, the property okay so let me look at the assessment file okay the assessment file in this case uh i need to navigate to the assessment file let me see whether i can find it quickly okay it's not here okay so remember in my workspace as defined by this um, workspace space this is not the usual way. I, I actually I define my workspace outside of EJSS, so it's it's trapped here. I go to source because I have many many files, so it's under uh, this particular folder. And the folder I remember it to be card game. Okay, card game, and I trap the JSON file here. So once the JSON file is trapped here, okay, then I can use any code editor. In this case, I'm using VB 
Code Studio. And you can see now in this particular uh, assessment file, I have a JSON format with the task, the name, the description, and the marks to be awarded is zero, provided that this is a state or which answer one is the data is zero. And oh, this is okay because this is a unique case because this should actually increment to a, a higher value. But unfortunately, in this particular question, it is impossible to get any answer. So therefore, I, I arbitrarily I set the value to zero lah. So even though it's not possible to get a data six lah for question three, which is the first question. Then the events is a start and the end. I use the the question one and the question two as the start and the end of the file, and I use a history. To to allow the, the 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 string of history that the student have done, in order to provide the insightful analytics for the teacher to decipher what the student have done. Later, maybe if I show you the actual uh, model, it will be it will make more sense. So in this particular question, four uh, zero provided this answer two. Remember that the code. Uh, the, when the value is zero uh, for answer two, uh, then the value the marks is, is this is marks la, or marks is, is zero. So the marks is arbitrarily set to four. Uh, then when the data is eight, okay, and and so on, okay. So I have used the start uh, to be the combo box because EJS has some issue triggering the the question two for this particular case. So I replace it by the combo box. When the combo box is selected and the data is four. Okay, and, and so on. So uh, this is the entire JSON file. Just take note that uh, be careful of the of the commas and all that lah. But other than that, um, it should it should work lah. Okay. So the trick now is uh, because I want to package the JSON file into every simulation that I've made. So I use this file. I use a a tick. Then I select. I select from my. I select from my. Uh, on my folder this particular file okay, okay because it's already selected lah. so okay so when in other words i am telling ejss that these files are assets to be packaged together with the simulation okay so if then what you do is you need to click on run to test that the simulation works okay if it works then uh, uh then you may want to select the combo box so notice there's no triggering no there's no top left corner messages so let's say for example uh, I, I arbitrarily set the answers uh, over here so you can do testing you can you can add the code here to help help yourself to uh, to debug what is what you require in the simulation so sometimes I may add all these hints uh, because uh, a simulation is only useful if the teacher struggle but don't don't get overboard uh, with the struggling like, until the student give up and then doesn't learn anything so i provided some hints so that there, there is some scaffold for some success okay so now uh, this is the part where you generate a simulation so remember when you generate a simulation you always need to do uh, this is to test to run this is to package it so i package it so I click to yes okay and because in my workspace this is my workspace is always inside the export folder okay so in my export folder, let me bring up my export folder. Just click click continue if there's any errors. So in my folder, okay, remember this is the the source. Let me see whether I have. Okay, I don't have. So uh, I trap the export here under workspace export, and this is the file. This file is very important because we need to upload to Moodle.